In Britain, we've got a history of building world-class industries. You will see that we have a history of losing those industries as well. And we have lost a world-class industry because either we've taxed it wrong, we've regulated it wrong, we've not invested in it, we've not attracted the right management to it, or we have simply let it become uncompetitive. Now, globalization means that business, goods and services move freely around the world. Globalization means that here in this country, we need to ensure that we remain competitive for financial services and the banking industry, which underpins financial services and underpins our economies. This country has a permanent trade deficit in tangible goods, and that gap has been filled by years by the exporting of financial services. If we take our eye off the ball of the interaction of regulation with competitiveness, our eye off the ball of how we are presenting our banking industry, if we take our eye off the ball of the need to retain this and the jobs and all that wide range of businesses, large and small in this country that depend on it, then we will lose that business very quickly indeed. If the UK is stupid enough to take action locally here for various emotional reasons on the banking industry, but ones which will neither serve the industry, the country, or all the businesses which you in this audience so well look after, it will not serve them well. I do not want to lose it as we have done so many of our great industries in the past. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Delighted to see so many of you here today. And I'd like to say welcome to our second annual business barometer survey launch. Well, the barometer, as, as in a very timely way, shortly after the budget, of course, has demonstrated these perennial issues that businesses face across the UK. For me, the, the key thing that came out of the business barometer this year was the, the split of opinion uh, between those who were optimistic about the, uh, the months ahead and those who were pessimistic. I think on the positive side, we're starting to see some confidence returning, and I think that's a big ingredient uh, towards the recovery. Uh, we all know the, um, the problems and the challenges facing small businesses these days. Um, and they are cash flow, regulation and access to finance. And I think um, if I was going to pick one out probably today because there's been some initiatives announced in the budget regarding to regulation, I would probably specifically pick out cash flow. So there's about four and a half million businesses up and down the country and it's so important that the banks and the, the advisors work with those businesses to make sure they're successful. And that's why it's so important that we work with the IFA. The IFA represents many of those businesses, we provide the funding to those businesses. And one of the things we're really keen to do is work with the advisors and with the businesses to make sure those businesses are successful. We're great fans of the Institute. Uh, because its members work very closely with the clients that, that we work with and we are strong champions of professional financial advice uh, however small your business might be. We've got a brilliant future. We are 100 years old in 2016. Our membership is growing. We've recently taken over the FTA which gives us a new area of activity uh, within the tax agents. I'm delighted that we have trebled their membership we're looking very carefully at what we can do as well for our members in the IFA in terms of developing products and services for them. We've launched a brilliant brand new uh, education program which is fit for purpose and meets exactly the needs of the kind of students coming into the business. We've got a fantastic future ahead of us. 